Hey everyone, Mitch here. This is the last part in the series about using images in Albo Rodeo 2.0. In this video, we'll explore the all new grid alignment system. When going into 2.0, we wanted the new grid alignment system to be automatic for aligning simple grids, but also extremely intuitive for aligning more complex grids. To explore the new system, let's first look at more simpler grids. Here I have a few maps in my explorer, and the first map you'll notice that the grid dimensions are defined in the file name itself. So 22 by 22 grid cells. So when I drag this image into our radio, we'll detect those grid dimensions and automatically set up the map properly. So now if I go edit to edit the map here, we'll see that the grid will align and we can double check that by hitting the manual controls button here and seeing that we have 22 rows and 22 columns. However, if we have a map that doesn't have the grid dimensions in the file name, like this example here, and we drag that in, our Rodeo will automatically try and recognize the grid dimensions for us using a heuristic that we've developed based off thousands of maps we've downloaded from around the web. It's not perfect and sometimes it'll get it wrong. So here, if we edit here, you notice that the grid dimensions are a little bit off here. So as we can see, the one, this line doesn't line up with this line here. So in this case, because we know we want the image to be 22 by 22, we can simply select the manual controls here and just type 22 and hit enter. And now everything is aligned again and we can just hit save here, and this will save that file. The maps we've been using so far were built with VTTs in mind, so their grids align nicely with the top left edge of the image. But sometimes you'll get maps that were designed as printouts first, so they have either large borders and offsets, or some of their grid cells might not align fully. Most of the maps provided by official D&D Adventures were designed in this manner. To show an example of aligning two of these maps, I'm going to use two examples. One is from Curse of Strahd and the other one from Tomb of Annihilation. I'll be using the player maps and we'll be only looking at the alignment of the grids, so spoilers should be very minimal. All right, so the first map from Curse of Strahd, I'm gonna drag into the interface. And that's uploading. I'm gonna hit edit here now. And we'll notice if I zoom out a little bit that this grid alignment is way off. And that's mainly because of this border here that they have on the image that offsets the rendering a little bit. Okay, the first thing that we're gonna do to make this easier on ourselves is we're gonna hit the manual controls here and we're just gonna use these alignment presets to align everything into the center of the map. So now the grid is aligned in the center we can now toggle to our alignment tool here. And now we have this physical control here that will allow us to align the map visually. Our design here was inspired by uh, rulers we saw on physical drafting tables. And we think it's a really nice visual representation of trying to align a grid in these kind of multiple dimensions. There are a few things you can do with this alignment tool. We can grab the ruler parts here and simply drag them and this will move our map up and down or left and right. We can grab our little handles here on the edge here, and this will resize our map up and down. And lastly, we have here what we call precision rails, which will resize, but on very small increments. Okay, in order to use this tool, the first thing we're going to wanna to do is align the top left of this ruler with the top left of a grid cell in the image. So zooming in and just moving a little bit the image left and right here to align that the best we can. There we go, that's looking good. And now just to get the sizing a little bit closer, I'm gonna use these coarse size adjustments here to kind of adjust that a little bit. That's looking okay here, but you'll see if we move to the right here that our grid is getting a little bit off as we continue to go. So this is what the precision rails are for. Now we can zoom into this far off area here and use these rails to align it more precisely. 
and that's pretty much it. So now if we zoom out a bit, you'll see that this map is almost perfectly aligned. We can of course adjust this as much as we want. We can try and get it even more perfect. Maybe there's a little bit off here and there, but to me, this is good enough for most every game. Okay, now I can just hit save to save this map. The next example I want to show is a map that is a lot larger than the encampment we just saw. So here I'm just going to drag this dungeon here. And now it's uploaded. I'm going to hit the same edit button here to edit it. And this is going to be the same procedure we had last time with the encampment. So first of all, just to center things out, I'm just going to align everything in the middle just to make it a little bit easier to see. And I'm just going to grab the rulers here and let's move the map a bit. Let's try and get these uh, grid cells to align with the top left of our ruler. Okay, that's looking pretty good. And now we'll just use some coarse size adjustments here to get it close enough. All right, that's looking all right. And now we'll just zoom in a little bit further into the map side over here and we'll just use the precision rails to kind of get this even more perfect there we go that's looking great okay and now we can zoom out and we can see that this alignment is looking pretty good it could maybe be adjusted a little bit more another little tip is that if we want to do precise movement we can also hold down the control key as we move and we can see that it reduces the amount the maps moved when the ruler is moved okay i think that's looking pretty good across the image itself great and just like that a map that would have taken ages to align in the old version of our rodeo is perfectly aligned in a few seconds and i'm just going to hit save here Okay, the last thing I want to look at here is aligning hex grids. So I'm just going to grab an overview map of the Sword Coast and drag it in here and hitting edit again. Now one thing to note with hex maps is that due to the math in how hexes are calculated, getting perfect alignments on hex grids can be pretty difficult, but we're going to try our best here. Okay, the first thing we, we want to do is I'm just going to increase the opacity here so we can see the grid a little bit better. And we haven't really gone over this before, but the button I'm clicking here in the bottom right is the grid preview controls. And this controls what our grid looks like when we're in the editor. One thing to mention here is that this is only a preview because when we import this map into a scene, the scene itself will define how the grid should look. I want my grid to be instead of squares, I want it to be more uh, horizontal hexagons. So I'm going to press the hexagon here. Great. And now to align this map, it's going to be a similar process as before. So here I can just move the map a little bit here. And I'm just going to align the left edge of this hexagon here with the left edge of my ruler. And I know I want to align the flat edge of this hexagon with this flat edge here. So now I'm just going to drag it down and maybe zoom in a little bit. So now we have this hexagon is pretty well aligned on the corner here and now also on the top. Okay, and we can use the same controls to resize our grid here, moving this up to get it close in this kind of coarse resize mode and now we're going to drag our screen a little bit to the right here and use these precision rails to kind of further align it okay that's looking pretty good on this side now if we zoom out a little bit we can see that there's a little bit of an offset here as we go down in the hex grid we can try and correct this as best we can but as I mentioned in the start, due to the math of hex grids, there's always going to be a little bit of offset with the way that they're rendered. Maybe we'll try just a little bit more here to get them closer.
Okay, that's pretty good. Not quite happy with it though, so I'm just going to mess with this a little bit more. Just holding down control to get some more precision controls here. And then maybe holding down control again to align this up a little more. Okay, we're looking pretty good across the hex. Not perfect, but as perfect as we're going to get. All right, now I'm just going to hit save here. So now we have five aligned maps. And if we wanted to, we could drag all these maps into the one scene together. So maybe there's a dungeon over here. And then there's maybe an encampment over here. And we'll just drag that down and drag it into the grid cell here. It's a bit hard to see. We'll change the color of the grid in the scene. And then move it in. Okay. One last thing to mention, when I drag this into the scene, I kind of noticed that Maybe this was align alignment was a little bit off. So if we don't want to go back all the way into the editor, maybe we're playing a game when we notice this. The quickest way to adjust this alignment while playing is we can head into the advanced transform controls. So we can either click the space bar or hit the transform control button here in the menu. And now this will open uh, an exact replica to the controls we were just using in the image editor. So as we can see, we have our ruler just like before. And I'm just going to change the position of this rule a little bit just to better align this top left edge. It's looking a little better. Maybe we'll grab the scale and change it. Okay, yeah, that's looking a lot better. I'm gonna head back to our basic controls here. Lock this map so we don't actually movement and we're looking great. Okay, and with that, we have finished the last part of this image tutorial series. If you have any questions, feel free to comment here on YouTube. Otherwise, thanks for watching.